Hello folks, today we continue our journey in Hoenn. Yes, you heard it right, it's Gen 3 time boys. With the games being released in the early 2000s and having a pretty remake for the 3DS already, today we look forward into how good shiny hunting was in Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, Fire Red and Leaf Green. Gen 3 was not only a graphical update to Gold, Silver and Crystal, now being on the Game Boy Advance, but some important mechanics changed as well. Beside now having 135 new Pokemon, the most important things changed was the change of DVs to IVs, with stats now going up from 0 to 31, instead of only from 0 to 15 in earlier games. Also, shiny Pokemon changed drastically. They are not generated anymore by their stats, but more through a calculation by the game between your trainer ID, a secret, not visible secret ID, and a personality value every wild encounterable Pokemon has. The probability of encountering a shiny was untouched though. Even if the mechanics of encountering changed, the chance is still the known one of 8192. So what are the pros of hunting in generation 3? Let's find out. Pros Faster breeding With the introduction of abilities came flame body and magma armor. What's that you ask? Well. Having a Pokemon with that ability on the first place of your party simply reduces the time of hatching an egg by half. That makes the whole breeding process less tedious in comparison to generation 2. But don't worry, we are not over with breeding yet. Fast encounters. Especially generation 3 is known for its fast encounter rates. Look at the comparison how fast you can encounter in gen 3 while encountering a Pokemon in gen 6 and 7. The odds are low, but the encounters are quick and soft resetting is even quicker. Compability With having Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, Fire Red and Leaf Green, you basically have the oldest games which could naturally connect over to the newer generations, before Pokebank was even a thing. If you got a Shiny in Hoenn or the Gen 3 versions of Kanto, you can keep it there, can transfer it to Colosseum or XD, get it to Gen 4 games, Gen 5 games, and only then you can use the Pokebank to transfer it up even further. For example, if you really want to, you can encounter a shiny in Ruby, beat that game with it and continue the journey through almost all other generations, which is awesome in my opinion. Once I got a shiny Charmander in Leaf Green for example, I did not only use it to beat the Elite Four in Kanto, but since then in every other generation up to Gen 7. Cons. 1 in 8192. I sound like a broken record, but that's how it is. Coming from the newer games with increased odds, that's definitely a con. No methods. Well, what should I say? 1 in 8192. That's it. Period. No Masuda method, no shiny breeding with high odds like in Gen 2, no chaining, no poker radar. You get it. Gen 3 is the only generation which is notorious for not having any possibility of increasing your odds. Soft resetting and encountering is quick, yes, but it makes basically every hunt long and a tedious process. And don't forget the days before Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. If you wanted to have a shiny Grodon, Kyogre, Rayquaza or Deoxys, well, what a shame, because it's shiny locked in Gen 6, and the only option to get him was only in Gen 3 and 4. Breeding. If you are lucky enough to get a shiny Pokemon through breeding with the odds of 1 in 8192, you are dependent of the game being generous to you even more, since you have no way of influencing the IVs, the nature or ability of your hatched Pokemon. If you are really unlucky, you get your desired Pokemon, but you cannot use it competitively. My shiny Charizard has a careful nature, which is one of the worst natures before the physical special split and even after. This does not mean that I do not value it, in contrary, I love it, and I used to love it whenever I can, but if you are looking forward into competitive, it's all just luck. Emerald's Broken RNG You may have heard of this, basically what it does. The way the game calculates the personality value of a Pokemon, which is crucial to determine if it can be shiny or not, is bound to a seed, basically the point from where your game is started. In Ruby and Sapphire, if your internal battery is still okay, the seed will continue consistently. 
but when the battery is dry or you play Pokemon Emerald, your seed will always be reset to a value of zero every time you restart the game, making it a difficult process to get a shiny, because if you are really unlucky after you soft resetted the game, you will always encounter the same calculated Pokemon, instead of being re-rolled completely fresh. This will only affect soft resets. It is still possible to encounter shinies in Emerald if you have an early shiny frame, and random encounters were completely normal, unaffected by this. If you are interested in how Emerald's broken RNG works, I'll link you a video to Shiny Collector 98. He has a video about it and it's explained really well. Uncatchable Puchiana or Zigzagoon. Oh boy, if you ever thought about hunting yourself a Trico, a Mudkip or a Torchic, prepare to try. If you are really unlucky, like me, you will encounter one shiny uncatchable Puchiana or Zigzagoon, depending on what you are hunting in Ruby, Sapphire or Emerald, after another. Why is it uncatchable? Well, at this point of the game you basically just got your starter, and not even a Pokedex, or a Pokeballs making it just a painful experience. Why, Game Freak? Why? So, what's my opinion on hunting in Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, Fire Red and Leaf Green? I think it's the most basic way of hunting your shiny if you really want to. You can only hunt with the same odds, and there is no way of increasing your luck. Hunts can take quite a while. I remember hunting my shiny Mudkip for like 6 months, being really unlucky. People like Gen 3, and there are many people even 15 years after the first release shiny hunting in it. Even if it's not my personal favorite in general, I would lie if I said that I didn't enjoy my shinies getting there. Shiny sparkles are kind of meh for me, but for all of the pro reasons, I can only say that I find joy hunting there as well. But what is your experience hunting in the games of Generation 3? What shinies did you got? If you wish to, let me know in the comments. As always, I hope you enjoyed the series so far, and I hope you stay tuned for the Colosseum Special and Generation 4. See you next time! Bye!